Hi friends, I'm back with you again today and I am so excited to see you. So today we're going to need our book and of course something to write with. And then we're going to use our blue mat today and our blue letters today. It's been a while since we've used those so I decided why not. So these four things are what you need out. You know what? Go ahead and get your, let me grab mine. Get your little beady bracelet. We haven't used that in a while either. We're just gonna do all the fun stuff today. So get these five things out. My pen dropped. All right, so are we ready to get started? Today, we get to read a story about two sisters. Who has a sister? I don't. I have two brothers. But today we're reading a story about two sisters who were going to a party. And one sister accidentally rips the other sister's dress. Have you ever had something that you really liked and your brother or sister ruined it? Yeah, me too. I had a painting that I did and my brother tore it. It wasn't very kind. Okay, before we do that though, we are going to do all of our reading fun. Go ahead and grab this. <clears throat> and we are going to count syllables today. It's been just a little bit since we've done that. So I'm going to remind you we're going to remember or refresh our memory on what a syllable is. Who remembers what a syllable is? It is a sound. It's a vowel sound. So every time your mouth opens, remember we've used our fist under our chin. So every time my chin drops, that's one syllable. We've also put our fingers up here by our jaw. so we can feel it open. We've also clapped. So all of those ways are ways we can find syllables. Today we're gonna to use our little bracelet. If you wanna use one of those other methods, go for it, okay? All right, I'm gonna say the word, you repeat the word, and then after you repeat the word, you're going to tell me how many syllables are in the word using your bracelet. You're gonna hold up your bracelet, okay? So the first word is fish, repeat. Great, show me how many syllables are in fish. One, fantastic, okay. Next word, 12, repeat. How many syllables are in the word 12? One, 12, yeah, good job. All right, what about the word winter? Show me how many syllables are in winter. Winter, great, we have two syllables. Now let's look at the word anything. Anything, yes, anything. How many syllables, show me. Anything, three syllables, good job. Maybe I should hold this over here. You can see it a little better. Um, last word. And this one is going to be our trickiest one. Are you ready? Elementary. 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 Yes. So let's count. Elementary. Now we say elementary. That's elementary school. So that's four syllables, elementary, but it's actually supposed to be said elementary. So elementary. You learned something new, didn't you? So that one was tricky. Five syllables. That was a long word. Okay. 
Now I'm going to do, or I'm going to give you two sounds, okay? Or a sound and a word. I want you to put the sound and the word together to create a new word. And then you're going to say the new word, okay? So I have in, and the new word is chin. Okay, so you're going to repeat the syllables or the sound and the word, and then clap your hands together when we put them together. Okay, so let's do that again. Ch in, chin, great. All right, what about eel? Seal. What about, oh, we have to wear these a lot right now. What about mm, ask? Mask. That's right. What about arm? Farm. Great job. What about, we'll do two more. And, and. Sand. Great job. Last one. Ready? We're going to do sh in. Shin. Great job. We started with chin and we ended with shin. I can't get my leg up high enough to show you my shin, but that's that bottom part of your leg. All right. Now we are going on to our alphabet mat. So I'm getting my blue one out. Let me share it with you. I'm going to have to zoom out here. I had my stuff ready for the next activity and I forgot we were doing the mat today. It is not wanting to fit in my camera today. Let me make sure. You can hear that noise, I'm sorry. My dog is playing with his ball. It's a very inconvenient time right now. All right, well, we can't see my whole mat, but you guys have yours, so I'm not super worried about it. Okay, so what do we start with? My beforehand is my left hand. Hold on, give me just a second. Okay, my beforehand is my left hand. My afterhand is my right hand. What's the first letter? A, and this last letter is Z. My middle two letters are M and N. My beforehand goes on my A. My afterhand goes on my N. Now what do we do? Touch a name, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H I J K L M tag N O P Q R S T U V W X Y N Z. All right, good job. Ah, oh, there we go. That works better. Now, how many letters are in the alphabet? Twenty-six. And how many kinds of letters do we have? Two kinds of letters. They are vowels and consonants. Good job. Our vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. Okay, now get your letters and empty them onto your mat. And again, we're going to place our first letter, which, oh wait, let's make sure the smooth side is showing. Let, let me give you time to do that. A lot of my smooth ones were showing today. Oh, 
Okay, so we're going to find the first letter, which is A, and we're going to place A. We're going to find our last letter, which is Z, and we're going to place Z. Then what are we going to find, going to find next? Our middle letters, M and N. Make sure you're placing them with the correct hand, your beforehand or your afterhand. And what do these letters do? What are they called? My anchor letters. They anchor the arc. Now, beginning with the A, you're going to find the letters in order and make sure you place them. I want you to say the name as you place it. Remember, this side of the arc, left hand. This side of the arc, place with your right hand. If you need to sit on your other hand so you don't use it, do that, okay? Go for it. Make sure you're saying your letter names. Okay, now we are going to do something with our letters today. I'm going to say the name of a letter. When I say the name of the letter, you're going to touch it and name it, and then you are going to tell me what letter comes after. So let me demonstrate. If I say the letter F, so as the teacher, I say F, you will say F, G is after F. I want you to talk in complete sentences. That might sound crazy, but this will help you be able to tell or know where your letters in the alphabet are without you having to go through the alphabet every time, okay? So if I say F, what do you do? Great, F, G comes after F. All right, we're gonna do five letters, are you ready? Okay, the first letter that we're going to do, or the next letter, is R. Yes, R, S comes after R. The next letter we're going to do is C. Great, C. D comes after C. Oh, my thing froze. I'm going to come back. All right, the next one is K. Yep, K. L comes after K. The next letter we're going to do is T. T. U comes after T. All right, last one. We're going to do the letter Y. Great, Y, Z comes after Y. Now, we're going to put our letters away a little differently today. I want you to put them away in order using your beforehand for this half and your afterhand for this half, and I want you to name them as you put them back, okay? So, A, B, C, D, you're gonna go all the way to M, and then when you get to N, you're gonna switch hands. All right? Okay, go.
Okay, I'm gonna give you about another 20 seconds to get that done. Okay, so now we are going to learn three new things from our reading deck, okay? I'm gonna say some words. When I say it, you echo it. You ready? Apple, simple, crumple, great job. Now, what is in the final position or the last position of all those words, what sound? Pull, that's correct, pull, pull. How many syllables are in each word? Apple, simple, crumple. Two, apple, simple, crumple. Great. What is the second syllable? Pull, yep. Now, I'm going to show you a list of words. There they are. I'm gonna show you the list. These are the ones we just did. Apple, simple, crumple. What, how is the ending sound spelled? P-L-E, that's right. What position does it occupy? The final or the last, and is it a syllable? App, pull, sim, pull, crumb, pull. It is a syllable. So when something is always the same, we say that it's stable. So what is it called? The final stable syllable. Great job. It's not a suffix, but it's always at the end. So what do we see? We see a bracket. So when you see this card, we see a, oh, let me stop sharing my screen. We see a stapler, right? What do we do with the staple? We staple things. So we're not going to say stapler, we're going to say staple, final stable syllable, pull. Okay, so repeat that. Staple, final sta stable syllable, pull. Good job, I know those. that's such a hard, like a mouthful, isn't it? Okay, now we're going to do some more words. Battle, repeat. Cattle. And throttle. Okay, what's the sound in all of the, at the end of all those words? Toll, that's right. How many syllables do all those words have? Two, battle. Cattle, throttle, and what is the second sound? Or the second syllable? Toll, good job. All right, let me show you that list. How is the ending sound spelled? E-L-E, where does it come? at the end of the word, so with the final syllable. And is it a syllable? It is. Bat, toll, throt, toll, cat, toll. When you put them together, those T's are one sound. Bat, toll, bat, toll, okay. Um, all right, so it is called a Final stable syllable. So we're going to do the little bracket in front of it again. So this one is a picture of a bottle. So we're going to say bottle, final stable syllable, TLE or tool. Bottle, final stable syllable, tool. 
Can you repeat that? Good job. All right, we have one more. It's Jessica didn't have enough room on her board for three lists though, so I need to write this last list on here as we go. All right, so this one has four words. What am I, what are you going to do after I say them? Repeat, that's right. So the first word is nozzle. Good job. The next word is razzle. The next is fizzle. And the last word is dazzle. All right. What's the sound in the final position? Zol. How many syllables do these words have? Two. Nozzle, razzle, fizzle, dazzle. And the second syllable is what sound? Zol. Okay, I'm gonna show you the words. How is that ending spelled? It's spelled Z-L-E. And where is it in the word, beginning or end? End of the word, the final syllable. Is it a syllable? Yes, so it is called the final stable syllable. That's right. Okay, so On this card, we have a puzzle. So we're going to say puzzle, final stable syllable, zol. Repeat. Good job. All right. We are, you know what? Yeah, we are. We're going to, we're just going to review a few of our words or sounds today and then we're also going to review if i can find where i put them here they are our prefixes and suffixes that we've done so far those pink cards and then we'll move on to our sight words okay all right so all of the new ones are going to be at the end of the deck of these but we are going to practice some old ones are you ready okay Digraph E E. E. Yep. All right, here come our final stable syllable ones, okay? Good job. Good job. Yep, you're doing great. We're almost done. We have two more. Three more. Remember, this is staple, not stapler, staple, final stable syllable, pull. Great job, you guys are doing so well. Okay. Let's review our suffixes and prefixes. What suffix is this? Less, what does it mean? Without, good job. Is this a prefix or a suffix? It's a prefix, what's the prefix? Un, and it means not great. What about this one, prefix or suffix? Prefix, 
what is it? This, and it means not. Great job. All right, last one. Prefix or suffix? Suffix. And what is it? What's the sound? Ing. And so what does it mean? Do you remember? Happening now. Good. All right, sight words. We have four more sight words today. We are going to, going to review all of our sight words. The first sight word is four. This is not the number four. It is, I want to do that for you. It's that kind of four. Children. With. His. Great, all right, your turn and I'm gonna echo or repeat. Are you ready? Four children with his. Great job. Miss Jessica's battery on her laptop is running low, so give me just a second and let me go grab that cord because I don't want it to die in the middle of sight words. But I mixed those sight words all in there for us so when I get back, we are ready to go. Everybody pay attention up here because I know you probably turned and talked to your friend while I was gone and that's all right. But let's go through all of our sight words. We are now at 64, I think. So that's a lot. I'm going to repeat the sight words today because we haven't done this in a while, just so you know that you're getting them correct, okay? All right. Said, do, this, toward, who, one, come, brother, people, mother, about, his, the, or the, Minute, water, long, called, beer, two, number, any, was, what were children under where should to from does Oil, these, wood, more, with, gone, goes, have, there, your that will word either or either could when not when 
when, when your mouth needs to open a little bit, that's an E. When, there, put, many, each, we're getting close, get, they, you, four, down, are, doctor, of, together, some, which, away, father. Good job. Those were so many. I cannot believe that you guys have 64 sight words that you've learned. That is amazing. All right, now let's grab our books. And I want you to turn to page 81. It has lesson 17 at the top and there's a picture of a picnic at the bottom. I'm going to read that first line and I want you to repeat. Baffle, bundle, simple, brittle. Good job. Now you're going to do the second line and I get to repeat. Are you ready? Go for it. Dimple, settle, nozzle, Drizzle. Great. All right. Don't worry about your neighbors. Read out loud those last four words on the last line. Go for it. Okay. Ready for him? It's restful, homeless, strung, and freeze. All right. Let's go down to our sentences. Sentence number one says, you're going to repeat, blend milk, eggs, and ham in the skillet. Great job. Okay, read the second sentence and then I repeat, but what's at the end of that sentence? A question mark, so how should you read it? Like you're asking a question. Good. Is the gun stuck to his neck? Oh, that would be uncomfortable, wouldn't it? All right. Question number three. Sorry. Sentence number three. Let's read it all together. The black hen has a nest in the shed. Good job. All right. Now I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to read those last, what, four sentences at the bottom. What do you think it's gonna be about based on the picture? A picnic. So go ahead and read those and I'll call you back to attention in a minute.
Okay, everybody focus back up here. All right, those sentences read, the picnic was held at the park on Friday. Sam and Ted took soft drinks and blankets. The soft drinks were in plastic bottles. Betsy took chicken wings and potato salad. Okay, so for our story today, we're going to do something a little different. If you are in first grade or second grade, raise your hand. All right, look around and see those people who are in first or second grade with you. And you are going to read the story on page 82. But don't do anything else yet. Just know that you're going to read the story on page 82. Third, fourth, and fifth graders, or third graders, raise your hand. Okay, if you're in third grade, you can choose page 82 or 83 in just a minute, okay? Fourth and fifth grade, raise your hand. You guys are going to read the story on page 83. This way, our first and second graders have a challenge that's good for them, and our fourth and fifth graders have a challenge that's good for them. Third graders, you're right in the middle, so either one would be good. The fifth grade one might be a little more challenging for you if you want that. But nothing's gonna be too hard for any of you. It's just gonna be a good challenge, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to read all the questions all together from both stories, okay? Now, uh, first and second graders, let's look at your, your story on page 82. Somebody tell me what the title is. The torn dress, good job. All right, what do we need to do first? Look at our questions. So question number one, why did Jill try on Jan's dress? Okay, so we have two, what did I say at the very beginning? Sisters, so I already told you they're sisters. So we have one sister trying on another sister's dress and we wanna know why. Number two, how did the skirt get ripped? Well, that tells us the skirt got ripped, so we wanna know how. Why and how? Number three, what did Jill say about ripping Jan's dress? So how, why, what? That's what you're looking for, okay? Got it? All right, fourth and fifth graders. So first and second graders, just hang tight. Fourth and fifth graders, but I need you to stay quiet. So the fourth and fifth graders can do their questions and get their instructions, okay? All right, fourth, fifth graders, third graders too. What is the title of this story on page 83? Pitches that win, that's right. What do you think this one's gonna be about? Baseball? Okay, we have some vocabulary words up there that we're going to go over. I don't have pictures for them today, but we're going to go over them. So American League, it's uh, kind of like the NBA for basketball. It's one of the, I mean, sorry. The American League is like the NBA for baseball. So um, you have the Major League Baseball and then you have the American League. Just two different divisions, okay? Um, it's like saying NBA and college ball for basketball, NBA and college. It's American and MLB, okay? But they're still, they're not college, but it's kind of like that. The next word is inning. So in basketball and in football, you have quarters. In baseball, you have innings. So an inning is just that portion of the game. There's nine of them in uh, baseball. And an inning means that both teams get to bat until they get three outs, okay? So an inning is a portion of the game. Dugout is where the team sits, kind of like the bench in basketball, okay? Um, let me see. It also talks about a bunch of different monuments and memorials. They're all in Washington, D.C. I'm not gonna go over exactly what they all are, but in the river they talk about is in Washington, D.C. It's a big major thing, okay. 
All right. So turn to page 84 and we can look at your questions. Question number one, why did Butch want to win the game? Okay, so why did he want to win? Number two, why would a baseball coach send in a relief pitcher? Okay, number three, we have this chart. Butch threw a slider, Butch threw a curveball, then a blank box, and the next two batters struck out. So this tells me, and it even says that it's a sequence chart. So it tells me I'm gonna have to figure out what goes in order there. And then number four is how did the Rockets win the game? Okay, so what we are going to do is, if you are in first or second grade, raise your hand one more time. Now, if your hand is raised, find a partner to read with and go. Don't read anything yet, just find a partner and get together. If you are in third, fourth, or fifth grade, raise your hand. Now you find a partner to read with. Go sit next to them, get together. Okay, now, first and second graders, you are going to read by, actually everybody, take turns reading sentences. You can read one sentence or two sentences, but then the next person goes. What comes at the beginning of a sentence? A capital letter. What comes at the end? A punctuation mark. Okay, I am going to give you time. I, I want you to read together and I want you to see if you can answer the questions. First and second grade, if you have problems reading the questions, that's okay, we're going to go over it. Third, fourth, and fifth grade, if you're not sure about an answer, it's okay, we're all gonna go over it, okay? But I want you to try and answer them on your own, since not everybody in the room is reading the same story, okay? Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to do that, have fun.
Okay, everybody's attention back up here. I hope you had fun reading your story. Um, we are going to read both of them and go over questions. Um, yeah, we're going to read both of them and go over questions. So, uh, first and second graders, are you ready? Third and fourth graders, you can follow, third, fourth, and fifth graders, you can follow along on this. Uh, the extra practice won't hurt. So just follow along and answer the questions if you want, okay? Jan was so excited about the party. She had been planning what she was going to wear for weeks. Her mother had made Jan a new dress from pale blue silk. Tiny blue ribbon was around the collar and the hem. Jan's twin, Jill, had a new dress too. It was bright yellow with white lace trim. The girl's mother had worked very hard to finish both dresses in time for the party. In fact, she finished them late last night. She had taken the girls to town last week. They picked out new shoes to match the dresses. The day of the party arrived. Jan went to her room to get ready. Jill stood there in Jan's dress. There was a rip in the skirt all the way down the side. Jan stood there in shock. What happened to my dress? How did it get ripped? Jill looked down at the floor. I'm sorry, she said. I just like your dress better than mine, so I tried it on. I got the heel of my shoe caught in the ribbon and ripped the dress. I'll let you wear my dress to the party. You're a good sister, said Jan. So number one, why did Jill try on Jan's dress? A, she liked it better than her own. B, she wanted to rip the skirt on Jan's dress. Or C, her, other her mother asked her to try it on. A, she liked it better than her own. I'm going to let you guys go back and look at the, or find your evidence in the story. We're not gonna do that together today since we're doing both stories. <clears throat> All right, number two, how did the skirt get ripped? A, one of the seams came apart. B, Joe was too fat. Or C, she caught the heel of her shoe in the ribbon. C, that's right, great job. And then number three, what did Jill say about ripping Jan's dress? A, too bad. B, I'm sorry. Or C, you're a good sister. B, I'm sorry, great job. Okay, first and second graders, you can stop listening to me for a few minutes and I want you to go back and underline your evidence in the text. Tell me where you can find the answers to those questions, okay? I want you to work on it and work on practicing that on your own while I, do the, while I talk to the third, fourth, and fifth graders, do their story, okay? All right, go try it, it's okay. All right, third, fourth, and fifth graders. <clears throat> it is your turn. The title is Pitches That Win. It was the hottest day of the season so far. Butch was the star pitcher of the Dallas Rockets baseball team. The Rockets were neck and neck with the New York Hornets in the playoffs. The winners would make the big trip to Washington DC for the American League title. Butch had been, put, had been pitching for seven innings and was getting tired. He was a left-handed pitcher and his shoulder was really hurting. The coach kept standing at the front of the dugout waiting for Butch's signal. The signal would mean that the coach would need to send in a relief pitcher. This usually happened in the seventh inning of many baseball games. Butch usually don't, didn't mind being relieved by another pitcher, but he really wanted to win this game. Butch had two reasons for wanting to win this game. He wanted to make the playoffs, but he also wanted to go to Washington, D.C. He had never been there. He had seen pictures and read books about the nation's capital, but that wasn't the same thing as being there. He wanted to see the sites. He made a list. He wanted to see the monuments of Lincoln and Jefferson and George Washington's Mount Vernon. He wanted to tour the White House, the FBI building, and the Capitol building. He had heard about a boat tour on the Potomac River, which passes through Washington, DC. His arm was hurting more now in the ninth inning. He was really tempted to quit, but gave it his best attempt. The big hitter from the Hornets team came up to bat. Butch threw a slider. 
and the ball whizzed past the batter, hitter's bat. Strike one. Butch threw, next threw a curveball. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Butch's straight ball flew past the batter. Strike three, you're out. The next two batters could not make a hit off of Butch's pitchers. The Rockets won. Next up, Washington, D.C. Okay. <clears throat> so, question one. Why did Butch want to win the game? A, he wanted to go after the American League title. B, he wanted to see the sights of Washington, D.C. Or C, both of the above answers. C, both of the above, good job. Number two, why would a relief, why would a baseball coach send in a relief picture? Pitcher. A, the pitcher is getting tired or is pitching badly. B, the coach always sent in a relief pitcher during the seventh inning. Or C, it is a requirement of the American League. A, the pitcher is getting tired or just pitching badly. All right, sequence chart. Butch threw a slider, Butch threw a curveball, and then what happened? And then the next two batters struck out. So what happened there? Did he, did Butch, was Butch's arm hurting now, hurting more now, the Rockets won, or the Rockets scored more runs? Oh, I read the wrong answer choice. I was confused. Let's do that again. So Butch threw a slider, Butch threw a curveball, then what happened? A, Butch's arm was hurting more now, B, the Rockets won, or C, Butch's straight ball flew past the batter. C, his straight ball flew past, and then the next two batters struck out, and then they won. His arm was hurting before that, remember? Okay, how did the Rockets win the game? A, they scored more runs in the 10th inning. B, in the ninth inning, Butch struck out all the batters. Or C, the Rockets scored more runs. How does anybody win any baseball game? You score more. So answer is C. That I don't think is in the story, is it? No, that is not in the story, so you don't have to find evidence for that one. But before tomorrow, I want you guys to sit down and find evidence for your questions, just like I had the first and second graders do, okay? All right, well, we are done. We did a ton today. We learned about final stable syllables of whole, P-L-E, toll, T-L-E, and Zol, Z-L-E. We also got to read two stories. Our first and second graders got to read a story about a dress, a party dress that ripped. And our third to fifth graders got to read a story about a baseball game. So I hope that you had fun today. I know I certainly did. And I will see you guys again next time. Bye.